Hi guys, it's Alex Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope. It's time for another Discoveries and Disappointments. You guys really liked it last time I did it, so I'm thinking maybe I should do it every month. I am continually sniffing things, so it makes sense. These are the things I discovered and disappointed in May. Quite a few of the things in this video are new things, so maybe if you're curious about some of them, this might help you. Always, it's my humble opinion. So let's just begin. The first thing I tried is something that I've wanted to try for a while because I keep hearing about it, and I happened to be in Liberty in London, and I saw it sitting there on the shelf twinkling at me, so I asked the guy if I could smell it, and I didn't like it. It is called Lune Feline, and it's by Atelier d'Azur. Their bottles always catch my attention. They're the ones that have the gold flakes that flow in the perfume. Very, very pretty. I know there's quite a lot of fans of this perfume, but I tried it and I was completely underwhelmed. It is a vanilla, and I guess that's why it's popular, because, you know, vanilla, good all-rounder, universally liked, pretty much, I would say. But I'd heard that this one was boozy, that it was this, it was that, and when I smelled it, I smelled a fragrance that didn't really feel like real vanilla to me. It might be real vanilla, but it didn't feel that way. It felt kind of woody, a little bit resinous, very round. It made me feel like it had vanillin in it as opposed to real vanilla. So I was immediately turned off and disappointed by it. I don't know if it's real vanilla. It could probably could be. I don't know. It just didn't feel that way when I smelled it. And I immediately just thought, no. So that's the first disappointment on the list. Sorry to anyone that likes it. Just my humble opinion. So the first discovery is this one, which I'm gonna spray on the blotter right here. And it is the new fragrance from Etat Libre d'Orange. It's called Soul of My Soul. And I always say that with Etat Libre d'Orange, they can go either way. They can, they've created some things in the past couple of years that have been really disappointing. She was an anomaly, I'm looking at you. But then they've created some really good things like Experimentum Crucius. Anyway, Soul of My Soul is gone onto my wish list. Um, they've done it again. They've created something that I think is very beautiful. Exit the King was in my last Discoveries and Disappointments. It was their kind of soapy Sheepra. This one is an incense, but it's not an incense of a typical nature. This has such a bright, clean powderiness to it. The incense is in the core, but it smells, it smells like the soapy part of Exit the King, I will say. And it's beautiful on skin. I've tried it a couple of times. I still have my sample. I wanna actually wear it on a day where I think I wanna wear that fragrance. It's not a sample that I'm just trying and then moving on from. So really pretty, it's got kind of a mellow powderiness to it but also with bright brightness and it's it's one of those another kind of out of the shower fragrances that I've been finding quite a lot of recently actually so soul of my soul I think it's part of their the bottles that come in the bronze thing they've done a couple of other ones in that line none of which I've liked so this is the first one that I have from that particular line they're priced a bit higher as well than the others but this is really beautifully, gently incense. And when I say incense, yes, that can mean many, many things. What is incense? It's such a loose term. Um, but for me, I'm gonna put it on down to a gentle frankincense because there is a touch greenery in here. It's only slightly resinous. It's really all about the brightest, cleanest powder to me and totally unexpected. And I always go into smelling Itali Badronge fragrances with a wary disposition. The next one makes me quite sad actually because I'm a big fan of the brand and I did smell this probably last month so it's a little bit of a cheat but I fully discovered it this month. There is a difference between quickly sniffing something and then fully discovering it. So this was sent to me by the lovely Abby Graham and it's by Imaginary Authors. It's called Decisions Decisions and I'm a fan of the brand, like I said. There's a couple of them that I think are absolutely amazing. Some of them that I don't like so much. And this one had potential for me, but it fell a bit flat. So it's a tuberose perfume, essentially. It has notes of, is it sarsaparilla? You know, like a caramel kind of root beery type smell. There's woodiness in it. 
And the opening I do like, actually. The tube rose is the main note, but it eventually goes to a overly sweet, over-egged kind of smooth, playful tube rose, which so many tube rose perfumes go to. And I like my tube roses a bit fresher, a bit greener, a little bit more sparkly, a little bit more exciting. So this is the first time that imaginary authors have ever used tuberose in quite a high amount. And the, there's actually a really good theme behind it and a story and the, some of the proceeds go towards a really good cause, which is a shame. And I think it's limited edition, but I'm always excited to try things for imaginary authors. And this one, when I wore it, too sweet, too smooth, too playful, too amouage love tuberose, too but beyond love by by Killian. It's that sort of tuberose that just a lot of them fall to, and that's why it was disappointing to me. I wanted to smell an imaginary author's tuberose and see how it was, but for me, disappointing. Sorry, imaginary authors, love you guys, but this one's not for me. The next discovery, I have my sample is misplaced, but oh my gosh, do I love this. It's one of the new fragrances to come from Strangers Perfumery by Prin Lomros. Given, I tend to like his other lines more than I do Strangers. He has three lines of fragrances. So Prisana and Prin, are, I prefer them. They're more experimental. Strangers are a little bit more of a wearable line for Prin. They're, they're his 24-7 kind of ready to wear. And I smelled this on someone actually. It's called A Sorta Fairy Tale in Hyde Park. And when I smelled this on a person, I thought they were wearing Hypnotic Poison by Christian Dior. Upon wearing it myself and trying it on my skin, I still feel like it's got elements of that in there. But if Hypnotic Poison was made for spring. That's how it feels. I thought that I could smell linden blossom. There's mimosa in it. It is a kind of tender spring floral fragrance that has some sort of element of gourmand, which in my brain loosely relates it to hypnotic poison. If you do get to try it, don't think you're gonna be smelling hypnotic poison, but it's got that texture and I think it's my favorite Stranger's perfume that he's ever made. I do have a couple of others that I love, but when I smelled this one, it was there was an instant attraction to it and I love it and I really want to get it now. So beautiful, beautiful perfume. So the next two are from the same company actually because I smelled them at the same time. I went to smell one, was disappointed and discovered another at the same time. So this brand is Tom Ford. You all know who that is. And I went to the Tom Ford shop to smell the new Tuberose New, is it is it Nuer? I don't even know how you pronounce it, but it's the new white uh, private blend Tuberose. This one started out like it would have been on the discovery list, but unfortunately it fell flat, so now it's on the disappointment side. It opened beautifully. It opened with everything that I like about Tuberose perfumes. There was a greenery, there was a freshness, there was something a bit springtime about it. Very distant, distant cousin of Carnal Flower by Frederick Mao. And about half an hour later, we fell into the sweet, smooth, vanillic, overdone by Killian, bon by, by Killian um, Amouage Love Tuberose and the D Imaginary Authors one. It just all falls it down that path. So that's why it's on the disappointment list. Would have been amazing if it didn't go there. So, I mean, I guess if you want to spend all that money on a private blend by Tom Ford and constantly top up, if you like the fresher Tuberoses, maybe try it out. I'm not prepared to do that. However, at the same time, I tried Champaka Absolute. Discovery for me. I'd always seen this one. Champaka is a note that I think is so underused in perfumery. I mean, it's a very expensive material, which is probably why it's not in a lot of things because, you know, perfumers must be like, I ain't using that. That costs way too much. But I sprayed this on my hand. I sprayed it on a card. I brought the card home. I was sniffing it all night and the next day. Now I need it in my life. Why did I have to go and fall in love with a Tom Ford private blend perfume? I've always cast them aside. All of the ones that I've tried, I've said, nah, they're all right, I don't know. It's the price that puts me off. But this one, it's kind of like two different perfumes. The opening is all about Champaka. It's got that gorgeous, kind of dirty, syrupy tea-like tropical feeling, and it's wonderful. I really, really like it. 
I mean, absolutely love it. In fact, it's on my wish list. The dry down though is very different. It dries down to a lily of the valley. It turns extremely powdery. It turns a little bit bridal. It turns a little bit fresh. In fact, the powdery texture of it is quite similar to the Soul of My Soul by Atali with Orange. I loved both the opening and the dry down of it. So on the wish list, massive discovery for me. And yeah, I guess I'm gonna be having a Tom Ford private collection in my collection at some point. The next disappointment was absolutely heartbreaking and the people that were with me when I smelled this, George Yang in particular, will know. We did a meetup at Javoy and I was randomly grabbing things and smelling them and I picked up a perfume by a brand called Prudence Paris and it's their number five perfume. I sprayed this on a card and I had this eureka moment any of you that follow me might know that I'm still trying to find the perfect Ylang Ylang perfume and Chameleon by Zoologist is the closest thing so far. Pretty much there, 99% there. This one was it. This was it. This was a Ylang Ylang perfume that I was trying to find. It had the Ylang that actually smelled like Ylang Ylang and not some imitation that I smell in so many other perfumes. It was rich, it was bold, it had enough Ylang Ylang in it that it was about that. I ran downstairs, because it was upstairs and George was downstairs, and I said, oh my gosh, I have found the Yang Yang I've been looking for. Went back upstairs, put it on my skin, and my world came crashing down. On my skin, it went so wonky that it was totally ruined, and I was like a balloon that got deflated. It smelled like petals trodden into a muddy puddle. It went really oddly, muddy and green and cloudy on my skin. Everything that I was smelling on the card was not what I was smelling in the perfume. And it was just, it was like a roller coaster of high and then just all the way back down to the bottom again and crash. So yeah, huge disappointment for multiple reasons. The next discovery is a sample that I've had for a while, but only actually just tried it this weekend. It's by a company called Ariza El Legrand, or is it Ariza El Legrand? This was sent to me by the lovely Kristen Spensley Harding. I've had this for a while, Kristen, but I've only just tried it. Been intrigued by this fragrance for the longest time. It's called Chypre Mousse. The note list is what intrigued me. Probably about 40 or 50 notes. I don't know. It has mushrooms and it has earth and it has clary sage and it has loads of flowers and loads of woods and loads of everything as a sheep does they're usually very complex the brand as a whole have been on my radar they're a parisian brand that look very vintage i really like the look of them so i wanted to try this mushroomy sheep so i did i think it's amazing the way it smells to me is if you've ever tried the original bat by zoologist and prettify it a little bit more. You've got that earthiness, you've got that sheep for a mushroomy, oak moss type feeling. And it does feel gentle and elegant, even though it's got an edge. So this one I just really like. It's, it's a tamed bat by Zoologist, and I didn't expect it to be like that. It's like bat's gentler cousin, or if bat went to the salon and got its nails did, you know? It's, it's just slightly prettier and the mush, everything in here is, is kind of perfectly placed. Nothing's too much. It's expertly blended and it makes me realize, yeah, I do want to try more from that brand. So I'll probably get a sample set at some point from them. So Sheep Mousse. It's also a little bit Mitsuko without the peach, but much more edgy. It is a classic Sheep perfume, but yeah. Interesting to say the least. I can imagine in autumn that this would be so good if you were wearing, I don't know, olive green clothes and brown scarf and just, it feels like an autumnal kind of walk in a forest smell with all of the things that grow there, but just put into a perfume. So that is a great discovery for me, Sheep Mousse by Ariza L. Legrand. The last disappointment is a, another tiny little bit of a cheat because I have tried this fragrance a lot of times, but it's always been in passing. I've never fully taken time to discover it. I've made a decision that I didn't like it before, but this time I was in Selfridges and I saw it and I said, you're mine today. I'm gonna spray you and I'm gonna feel you and I'm gonna try and understand you. 
It is Unpopular Opinion Baccarat Rouge by Francis Kirk Jean. I really took the time this time to smell it and I don't get it at all. I don't understand why everyone goes on about this perfume so much. It is a very astringent medicinal saffron when you first try it. It's woody, it smells extremely synthetic, but that's fine. Synthetic doesn't mean bad. But the amount of people that say that they wear this when I talk to them and they say, you have to try it. So I have tried it before, but it's always been on a sniffing day where I've smelled a lot of things and it's, I end up just get, you know, paying more attention to something else that's nearby. This time I brought the card home, I put it on my skin, I let it sit by my bed. I mean, I'll give it its due. It stayed on the card for three days, three days. So maybe it's the bang for your buck thing that people like, but the actual smell of it, to me, verges on unpleasant. And perfume doesn't have to be pretty all the time. I'm not that sort of person that thinks that, but it was a bit rough. Yeah, a bit rough. Saffron's a tricky one. It can smell like paint to me. It can smell inky. And if it's blended with certain things, it's beautiful. But in this one, it just smelled medical. Like I'd cut myself and somebody had put something on my skin to cauterize the wound or to, you know, stem the bleeding or something. I don't get it. And people are probably going to say, Oh my God, I don't believe you don't like it, but we're all different. We all like different things. Anyway, let's talk about the last discovery that I've made, which is really, really exciting. Doing the YouTuber hand. It is Chipmunk by Zoologist. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I recently bought a bottle of Sloth from Victor and he sent a sample of this with it. This isn't gonna be a full review because I still need to wear it properly. I've done skin tests twice and I think it's a winner. Give him. Some of the newer releases from Zoologist have not been my favorite. They are my favorite brand. And I recently did a video where I ranked all of them from 27 to one because I've tried all of them. Some of the newer ones were a bit lower on my list. Chipmunk could be near the top. It's ultimately a woody perfume and I will do a full review of it. I just need to, I'm gonna need to wear more than a sample to figure this one out um, because it's got a lot going on. But it, there's a ton of woody notes in here and it smells to me mainly at the beginning uh, like fur balsam it is kind of related to, to musk deer a little bit i think but much softer it smells to me i really like the dry down of musk deer it's got that fluffy sweet playfulness it feels like the opening of musk deer and the dry down have been smushed together then added in some brown furry tones. It's really cute. That's what I said to Victor. It smells cute. And that's a really weird way to describe a perfume, but it does. But what's really great about this is about an hour in on the skin, it becomes, there's some kind of gorgeous floral bouquet in the middle that is surrounded by brown fuzziness. And it's warm and it's not as nutty as I thought it was gonna be, but I can see myself really loving this. Again, autumnal. I don't know how I'm managing to smell autumnal things in spring, but I'm always discovering things and just grabbing whatever I can. So Chipmunk by Zoologist is a little bit pine foresty, but with furry brownness and a smooth, fluffy musk and um, just a, a lovely floral accord that comes out when you put it on yourself. And it kind of feels a little bit like jasmine and other white florals that are crisp. And um, that's all I can say about it right now because it's still a brand new discovery, but I definitely love it. So that is good. Anyway, guys, that is my discoveries and disappointments for May. I plan to do this every month, providing I've smelled and tried enough things. But yeah, that's, that, that's, the, uh, that's where I'm at right now with it. So I hope you like this video and maybe found out about something that you've been wanting to try. I'm Alex Mambano, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.